Welcome to Module 1 of the Casper Certification course. In this module, you will learn how to set up your development environment. This will enable you to start building your own decentralized apps on the Casper blockchain ecosystem. This module will cover the basic tools you will need to set up your first Casper smart contract, getting you ready to start building your very own dApps, which are simply applications built upon a decentralized blockchain infrastructure. By the end of this module, you will be able to compile, run, and test a sample smart contract on your local computer. We have designed this course for those who are familiar with blockchain technologies. If you're new to this domain, but are eager to learn, we hope the course will give you an adequate foundation to get started. Casper's blockchain is built upon the Rust programming language and compiles down to WebAssembly. If you don't know what either of those mean, don't worry about it for now. We'll do a deeper dive later, but for now we need to get your environment set up to be able to build your first smart contracts. If you'd like to read about Rust, here are some excellent resources. Last but not least, we welcome your brilliant ideas. The Casper blockchain is still in its early stages and has great potential to support decentralized, performant, and more secure blockchain implementations. The first step is to install the Rust programming language if you don't already have it on your computer. For detailed installation instructions, you can refer to their documentation linked here. If you are on macOS or Linux, you can install Rust via the command line using curl. Make sure that you have curl installed first, of course. Notice on the last line that it says the version is the nightly version. It's important you remember to install the nightly build as your default toolchain because we depend on their latest tools in our development. Once you finish installing Rust, you can check your version with the command rust up version. Your terminal output should resemble something like the following. Uh, note, obviously, that at the time of the writing of this tutorial, the latest version of Rust was 1.23.1, and yours may differ. So let me check this on my computer right now. All right, everything's verified, let's carry on. Next, we're going to start installing the necessary dependencies. CMake is a popular build tool that we will utilize. You may very well have it already installed on your computer. If you do, make sure that you have the latest version. Currently, it's 3.19.4. If you need to install or upgrade it, follow the steps located at cmake.org slash install. And once installed, again, check your version as shown below and it should resemble this output. So I'll check mine really quick. And obviously you can see it's good to go. So now we're ready to install the Casper Labs crates. In order to get started with Casper, we need to use a Rust tool named Cargo. Cargo is a build system and package manager for Rust, much like PIP if you're familiar with Python. Using Cargo, we can install the Casper Labs crates. A crate is a compilation unit which can be compiled into a binary or a library. So let's install them with cargo install cargo casper. Now this command may take a few minutes to execute, but I used the magic of video editing to skip ahead to spare you the pain. So let's continue on. Now that we have the casper crates installed, it's very easy for us to create a project. For example, let's say I want to create a project named my project for this tutorial. You can choose a different name if you wish, of course. Then I can simply run the command cargo casper my project. Let's try that out. And as you can see, the command created this folder called my project. Now, before we do anything, we can take a moment to explore the sample code. For development purposes, you can use your favorite IDE or editor. My preferred one is VS Code, that's the one you've been seeing, but there are many great options out there. As you explore the source, notice there are two main folders, Contract and Tests. You will see the Contract folder contains a contract named MainRS, and the Testing framework contains a simple test called Integration Tests. The Casper Virtual Machine executes a smart contract by calling the call function specified in the contract. If the function is missing, the smart contract is not valid and will not be invoked. So let's take a look at that really quick. As you can see, the contract folder contains a source folder, and here's main.rust. And that function call is necessary, otherwise it's not going to actually build. Similarly, if you look in the test folder, you can see there's a source and this integration test, which we will actually run in a moment to see whether our code is actually working or not. So now that we have a starter project, we can compile the smart contract. As we just mentioned, if you look inside the newly created My Project folder, you will find two folders, Contract and Tests. Let's focus on the contract for now. We need to build the project. In order to do that, we have to go into the folder and install the Rust toolchain and specify the target build as WebAssembly, 
or WASM32 as is shown here. Now that we have REST set up, we have to compile the sample contract into WebAssembly. Inside the contract folder, run the command cargo build release. It's worth mentioning that this is a very important command to take note of. Notice that we build the contract using the release option. You should always build contracts in release mode because a debug build will produce a much larger contract that is more expensive to execute on the blockchain, which means higher gas prices. Once it's compiled, inside of the contract folder, you will see a target folder that will contain the compiled smart contract named contract.wasm. So let's test this out really quick. Okay, and since the contract is really small, it should be very quick, and you see this target folder right here. And if we step into the wasm32 release, you'll see that contract.wasm is right here. And obviously this is binary, so we can't view it. Okay, we're good to go. Let's continue on. So with the contract compiled, we can run tests on it to make sure it behaves as expected, and we follow good test-driven design principles. In addition to creating the contract, the Casper crate also automatically created sample tests in the myproject/tests folder. The Casper local environment provides an in-memory virtual machine against which you can run your contract for testing, so we can use it to test our contracts during our development. To run the test, simply issue the command make test in the myproject directory. Since we were just in the contract directory, we can go up one directory level with the cd dot dot command. When you run this test crate, it will automatically build the smart contract in release mode, just like we did a moment ago, and then run a series of tests against it. So while you're building locally, you don't need to manually compile your contract if you're running the test script. The custom build script is named buildrs if you're interested in looking more into it. After the compilation finishes, the test should run and you should see output similar to this message in your terminal. Now, if you successfully ran the test, you've basically verified your build environment is ready for development. However, before we conclude this lesson, let's verify that the tests are actually testing something in the code. So as a brief example, open up my project contract source main.rs and modify the key value in the contract, and then rerun the test command. You should observe that the smart contract recompiles and the test fails now. So let me try that really quick. So I'm going into main RS, and you'll see the special value. So it doesn't really matter what we change it to, but I'll change it to new value. It's looking for this special value key. So this time around, you can see that now the test failed. So as you can see in the error, the test failed because special value was not found as an expected key. This test was specifically looking for that key and so it didn't pass. Also note that we didn't need to manually build the contract ourselves after making the edit. The test build script did that for us. All right, congratulations on completing module one of this course. You're now equipped to proceed to the next tutorial. Lastly, if you're new to Rust, we also highly recommend that you take the opportunity to get more familiar with it by reading these excellent resources. That's it for now. See you next time. Cheers.